Welcome to Simply Safety version 6, Setup Movie 2. This movie is intended to provide the safety manager with an overview of relevant features in the Simply Safety Setup module. Most setup module features are managed by the safety manager. By the end of the movie, the safety manager should be able to perform the tasks listed on this screen. Hi, this is Ron from KnowledgeWare, and I've opened the Setup module in Simply Safety version 6, and we're on the main tab. On this tab, we're going to look at three items, deleting demo data, your license key, and version number. So this um, copy of Simply Safety is already in use and has a license key already added in the green area here. If it didn't have, if it was a brand new Simply Safety database, there would be a button at the bottom right down in this area here that says Delete Demo Data. If you're starting off with Simply Safety and you have a Delete Demo Data button, you'll want to click on that button and delete your demo data, which is just um, test data that's put into the database so you can see how it works before you put your license key information in. Because after you enter your license key information into these green fields, that button is going to disappear and you won't be able to get rid of that um, demo data easily. So if you're opening up for Simply Safety for the first time and you have a button here called Delete Demo Data, when you're done playing with that data, you want to click that button to delete the demo data. Next, your license key information will have been emailed to you by KnowledgeWare. You need to put the license key information, which is a coding sequence, into the top green field, followed by your company name and your company main address. Now note that the license key is, uh, works in synchrony with your company name and address and those have to be entered exactly as they're sent to you by KnowledgeWare. For instance, if I was to remove the period after the Corp in KnowledgeWare Communications Corp, the license key would no longer work. At the bottom left of the screen is version information on Simply Safety. The top line gives the version number of the front end the client front end. That's what we're looking at right now is the client front end. So that's the version number of the client front end and the back end um, database version is the lower number. Okay, the um, Canada USA checkbox on the screen controls whether um, province names show up or state names show up. It controls some preferences in the program so make sure that's properly set. The information on the upper right is just for storage information. It's really not that important. If you're a U.S. company using OSHA logs and you have an establishment name, you'll want to put the establishment name in this box here. I've clicked on the Setup Preferences tab. We're now on tab 2 called Preferences. There's a number of settings on this tab. The uh, fields in the upper left corner on the left side of the screen are largely optional. Fill them in if you want. They're just a storage place for convenient information. Um, if you're a Canadian company, MSDS sheets expire every 36 months. You'll likely want to leave that setting at 36. And for statistical calculations in Simply Safety, um, by default it uses a 200,000 hour uh, figure. If you're an international company, you may want to switch it to 1 million hours for, for statistical calculations. But by default it's left at 200,000. On the top right of the preferences form, uh, there's an important field here in gray, set preferences for creating unique employee IDs. In Simply Safety, every employee has to have a unique ID number. Normally companies have their own company ID numbers, so by default the bottom radio button is checked. Use our own company employee ID numbers. Um, and often you will export your people from uh, another database, from an HR database or Excel spreadsheet, and you'll have a unique employee ID number there. If you don't have employee ID numbers that are unique and you want the system to generate them for you, you'd click on this top radio button and Simply Safety would generate um, unique ID numbers based on the last three letters from the last name and the first four letters from the first name. But by default, and the vast majority of companies use this bottom radio button, use our own company employee IDs. The four buttons below here, let's just quickly skip through them. Uh, people, Module, Privacy, Setup. I'm just going to click on that. That allows you to set some privacy settings for the information that's displayed in the People module. So if I were to click on High, the items below would be hidden. Um, social security number, date of birth, gender, date hired, etc. By default, I'm just going to 
uh, click on privacy not enabled and no data is hidden. Below that calendar color setup um, the audit trail calendar has various colors on it you can set the colors here if you want to change those colors reset if you should lose the power user password it can be reset here under this button and should you want to connect to another SQL Server database if you click this button here the next time the program st starts you'll be prompted to look for another SQL Server and connect to another SQL database the area below in yellow enable automatic email notification module under the main menu setup there's an email notification module which sends summary emails when um, an event like a injury or inspection is added to Simply Safety. In order for that to work and send emails out, this checkbox must be checked. So if there ever becomes an incident where you want to stop emails automatically being sent, you just uncheck that. But normally for most companies, they, they would have that checked. At the bottom right is a way to add your company logo to the program. Um, to display the logo in the program, you simply select a logo and click this button display logo. Now your logo can be in any of these four formats JPEG, GIF, PNG, or BMP format but it should be approximately 76 by 76 pixels in uh, height and width. The closer you can make it to that the better it's going to look. And my own preference is put it in PNG format with a transparent background. I just moved to the setup tab number three pick lists. This is a very important tab and this is where you set up most of the custom information for your company that comes out of Simply Safety. So when we open up this tab on the left we're looking at all of the different pick list items. There's quite a few of them in there. I can scroll up and scroll down them. When you click on one on the left it changes the panel on the right. So these are the items that are inside this item on the left. Accident type is non-reportable or reportable action category falls into these categories, etc. So it's very easy to add, edit, and delete information here. If I wanted to add something to the action category, I just double click on the right panel and click on the Add button. And I'm going to add New Item. And then just save it. And there's the new item in the list. Now if I want to delete that item or edit it, I just double click to open it and I would click on delete. Now when you do this sometimes some of these items are going to be grayed out so they can't be deleted. That's because they're in use in the program and since they become a historical record now they can't be deleted. So you want to be careful when you put this information in and you start to use it that it's something that you actually really want in there. I'm just going to delete that one because it's not very important. So as we look through this big long list it looks rather overwhelming but as the notes on the right indicate there's really only about five of them that you need to set up right away when you're setting up Simply Safety. And as the note says across the top of the screen, first enter region, then site, and a site must belong to a region. So Simply Safety is built on a two level hierarchy of sites and regions, and sites belong to regions. Now, you can change the name of region and site if you want, and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. But for our purposes today, we'll look at regions and sites. So while there's a lot of items in the list here, really these five here, region, site, job titles, people types, and toolbox groups are probably the ones you're going to want to set up right away when you're setting up Simply Safety. The other ones, um, there's a lot of preset information in the other ones, injury area, injury class, injury mechanism. These are standardized items. You can go in, add, edit, and delete from them as you want. You can also do that if you have sufficient security permissions right out of any screen in Simply Safety by simply clicking on a drop down box. So this information here is the information that populates drop down boxes throughout Simply Safety. So if you're upgrading from version 5 to version 6, all of your information will already be in here from version 5. If you're setting up Simply Safety for the first time, when you come into the pick list, you'll want to look after these items here, the important ones, the regions, the sites, job titles, people types, and toolbox groups. And optionally, you may want to set your outside and contract instructors, add people to inspection teams, add your medical test items, and add your safety observation tasks. 
I've just clicked over to tab number four, email setup. Um, I'll just mention that this is mostly for the IT department to set up the outbound email. So uh, that this uh, tab is covered in the uh, setup movie for IT people. The next tab, release notes, just tells you what's new with each different release of Simply Safety. The IT system information tab is intended just about exclusively for the use of the IT department, and it's covered in the uh, setup movie for the IT people. Region Site Integrity Check tab allows you to check the integrity to make sure that your sites are all lined up with the proper regions. As I click on these items on the left, if nothing shows up, everything's fine. You would rarely use this tab. I've just clicked onto the last tab in the setup module called Labels. This tab allows you to change the labels that appear in various places in the program. So I'm going to start on the upper left here. Simply Safety is built with uh, two-level hierarchy, region and site. Now, I, you don't necessarily have to call it region and site. You could call it um, country and city. Or you may choose to call it location and department, etc. It doesn't really matter what you call it but you just have to keep in mind that this item here, normally called a site, must belong to a region. So you can just change the labels there and save and that'll change it throughout the entire Simply Safety program. Now if you're also using Simply Safety Alert and you change these labels here, you need to click on this button here that will update the Simply Safety Alert program with the new customized names that you put into these fields. On the bottom left of the screen is a box that includes three optional location filters. Now, as the name indicates, these are optional. You'd only turn these on if you need it. I don't recommend turning them on unless you actually need it. If you turn them on, you can put any name you want in here, and then these fields will appear on different Simply Safety screens. For instance, in the People module, the person would be assigned to a region and a site, but if we turned on this first uh, user filter, a division field would also appear. And you'd use these fields if you need to filter down your information more finely than by region and site. So if you also wanted to filter injuries, etc., down by division, you may turn this one on and call it a division. If you don't want to call it a division, you could call it um, anything else you wanted to call it. So you could call it literally any kind of uh, name that you wanted to call it. Now, I'm going to put that back to division. I recommend not turning these filters on unless you need them. Um, it doesn't do any harm if you turn them on, but if you turn them on, you have extra data input to do. And if people don't do that data input, then your um, data will never fully come back as it should. On the right side of the screen is a number of the standard labels used throughout Simply Safety. For example, people type. If you didn't want to call it people type, if you wanted to call it rank, you just change that to rank and save. Then when you went into the people module or anywhere else in the program, that name would be called rank. If we want to go back to people type, just again type in people type and click save. Okay, at the bottom left of the setup, setup module, there's three buttons. The first one is a print button, and that prints all of your pick list data from tab number three, pick lists, so you can review it on paper. Uh, the other two buttons, one is for import and one's for export. So Simply Safety is built to import people and incidents. So I've just clicked on that button. It opens up a form that has two tabs on it. One is for importing people. One is for importing incidents. Now there is another movie on this subject, so I'm not going to go into this deeply. But the format that people and incidents must be in to be imported is listed on the screen here. Also there's good instructions. If you click on this import instructions, it will uh, uh, print a paper report that you can match up your data with. Now Simply Safety uh, ships with two Excel spreadsheets, one called people.xls and one called incidents.xls. So your data must match up with the fields in those spreadsheets before you attempt to import them. And if you're intending to import, then um, you need to watch the movie on importing. The export button 
just allows you to quickly export some of the tables so some of your data out of Simply Safety in case you want to manipulate it in another program or, or in Excel.